What can you do, Jesus? Let's go!
Uh, thank you. Uh, let us play so that we can uh, hear the word. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you. We want to bless your holy name. Thank you, Jehovah, because you are good, you are faithful, and there is no one like you, Jehovah. We thank you because of this opportunity you have given unto us, so that, dear Lord, we may share your word. We do pray, my Father, in the name of Jesus, that your word may have a place in the hearts of your people. May your people have revelation of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I want to greet all of you in the name of the Lord. Even our online viewers, we want to welcome you in this Sunday service. And let me say, I want to thank God because of giving us opportunity to share his word this morning in this Sunday service. And in a time like this, and on this platform. Let me start by saying, I'm born again. Jesus Christ is the Lord in my heart. And the Bible reminds me in the book of Romans, chapter number five, verse eight, that while I was still a sinner, Jesus Christ died for me. When I was so far away from God, by the death of Jesus Christ, I was brought nearer to him. And I continue to seek his face. I continue to seek his guidance and counsel while still in this life. Praise the Lord. Amen. This morning, the Lord has put a word in my heart. And uh, I want to share with you. And I feel persuaded to share this word. And especially a time like this. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, and the message I have is coming close to God. The message is drawing near to God. Drawing close to God. That's the message I have today. And we shall read from the book of uh, James, chapter number four, from verse seven. through verse 10. And I'm reading from the, I'm reading from NIV version. And I read, submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and and he will flee from you. Come nearer to God, and he will come nearer to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wear. Shed your laughter to mourning, and your joy to groom. Humble yourself, before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Praise the Lord. In the life we are living today, there are so many things that are happening around us. Technology has brought good things and other things that are bad. Uh, we here of so many things that are happening away from us and others are happening just around us. Technology has brought evils and especially in the social media. We live in a world of uncertainty and confusion. We live in a world whereby you cannot be able to predict. Praise the Lord. In this life we are living, there are so many calamities. Like, like recently in our country, we started with desert locusts. And when these locusts came, they destroyed most of, of our farms in about uh, 27 counties. 
and the government of Kenya had used a lot of money to get rid of this menace. From the desert locusts came coronavirus, whereby every nation in the world is traveling with it. All nations have come to a standstill, and so many people have died because of this disease. From coronavirus, there came the France in our country, which has brought havoc in most of the parts of our country. And so many people have died because of this France. From the France, we hear of other insects in some parts of the country, like narrow beef fry, popularly known as narrow beef fry, and some other insects. Economies have been brought down. Businesses have been closed. Jobs have been lost. People are crying for food. Poverty is creeping to our people. People are killing one another. And there's so many things happening. There is nothing that is working. And the Bible says in the book of Job, chapter number 30, and verse 26, Job is saying, yet when I hoped for good, evil came. When I looked for light, there came darkness. But I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, there is still hope, praise the Lord. In all these things, there is still hope. And I want to tell you, the only thing we need to do is to be close to God. Our God has an answer. Our God has a solution to all these problems. Praise the Lord. If you come close to God, if you draw nearer to God, I want to tell you, there, there is a solution. Praise the Lord. In the book of Zechariah, chapter number one and verse three, God is telling people through prophet Zechariah, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Praise the Lord. If we return to God, our God is ready to return to us. He is a merciful God. Yes, you have been far away from God, but he is calling upon you to return to him. Praise the Lord. And this morning I have come to tell you, return to God. Oh, hallelujah. I have come to tell you, return to God. And he will return to you. Come closer to him, he will also come closer to you. Because he is a merciful God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And in the book of Malachi, chapter number 3 and verse 7, God, through prophet Malachi, is telling the people again, return to me and I will return to you. In this time of so many things, I want to tell you, brethren, we need to return to God. We don't have any other option but to return to God. And here in the book of Malachi, that chapter number three and verse seven, when God is telling people to return to me, people do ask, how do we return to you? You know there is a tendency of people behaving as if they don't know. And they are asking, how do we return to you? They know they have disobeyed God. And then they are asking, how do we return to you? Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, people behave in a manner, you know, they tend to, to behave as if uh, they have done nothing. And by that time they have disobeyed God. And that's why God is asking, God is telling them, return to me. And the servant of God, James, in the scripture we have learned, have given five ways of returning to God, of coming close to God, of drawing close to God. One way James have given is by submission. Praise the Lord. 
is by submission. You submit yourself to God. You give yourself to God. You let God control your life. You let God guide you. And if you do that, I want to assure you, God is ready to receive you. You will be closer to him because you have submitted yourself to him. You know there is a tendency of people not submitting themselves even to the authorities. And you know all the authorities have been given by God. So here we are being advised. We submit ourselves to God. And as we submit ourselves to God, then God will be ready to receive us. He will be ready to accept us. My brother, my sister, don't be so far away from God. You just submit yourself to his authority and God will accept you and you will be closer to him. And in him, you will be safe, praise the Lord. In whatever is happening today, if you come closer to God, if you submit yourself to him, I want to assure you, you will be safe. Doesn't matter what is happening today, you will be safe in God because you will come closer to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. In the book of Job, chapter number 22 and verse 21, the Bible says, submit to God and be at peace with him. And in this way, prosperity will come unto you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if you submit to God, if you be at peace with God, prosperity will come unto you. So my brother, my sister, I want to encourage you. You can submit yourself to God so that you can prosper. Praise the Lord. People are looking for, for, for prosperity in other areas. There are those who worship the devil. There are those who are stealing so that they can prosper. There are those who are killing so that they can prosper. But I want to tell you, if you submit yourself to God and be at peace with him, I want to assure you, according to the word of God, you will be able to prosper. Praise the Lord. So if you come close to God and submit yourself to him, good things will come on your way. Hallelujah. So don't look for, for prosperity from other areas. The prosperity is in God after submitting yourself unto him. Number two, another way James has given us to come close to God or to draw nearer to God is by resisting the devil. Resist the devil. If you resist the devil, I want to tell you, you will come closer to God. Warming up with the devil is being far away from God. If you warm up with the devil, I want to tell you, you shall be far away from God. But today, the word of God is telling us, resist the devil. You know the work of the devil. It is to steal, it is to kill, and to destroy. The devil will steal your peace. The devil will steal your joy. The devil will kill what you have. And he will destroy what you have built. So I want to tell you, brethren, resist the devil. Amen. And if you resist the devil, you shall be close to God. The devil and God, they cannot be in the same camp. So you need to resist him at our cost. Don't give me much chance. And the Bible says in the book of Ephesians 4 and verse 27, I do not give the devil a foothold. Don't give the devil a chance. You know there is a tendency of some people warming up with the devil. They just accept the devil. I want to tell you if you warm up with the devil, the same enemy will kill you. So assist him at all costs. Don't give him a chance. If he comes to you, you just remind him like Jesus. It is written. Praise the Lord. You need to have the word of God in our burdens so that you can be able to resist the devil. You shall be able to remind him. It is written. Praise the Lord. 
Jesus defeated the devil by telling him it is written. This morning, I want to tell you, you need to have this word of God in a burden so that you can be able to tell the devil it is written. And by so doing, the devil will flee from you. And in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6, and verse 11, the Bible says, put on the full armor of God so that you can be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Praise the Lord. So the devil has so many schemes and he will come to you. So it is up to you, it is up to me to put the full armor of God according to the word of God so that you can be able to resist the devil. And my brother, my sister, let me tell you, if you do that, you will be well assured that you will be nearer to God. You will come close to God. Praise the Lord. Another way of coming close to God, according to James, is by washing your hands. By washing your hands and purifying your hearts. Praise the Lord. In this time of coronavirus, we are washing our hands every now and then, which is very good because we shall be able to eradicate this virus. So continue washing your hands as we, as we are being advised by our health experts. Let us continue washing our hands. It is good to wash hands. Again, you will be clean. But the hands we are talking of here is not washing, literally washing hands. It's by not shedding innocent blood. Praise the Lord. You don't need to shed innocent blood. You don't need to touch anything that is ungodly. Anything that is unclean. That's what God is telling us. Wash your hands. Amen. And avoid shedding innocent blood. Yes, and then purify your heart. You know in the heart, that's where so many things are, are stored. And then you know what, brethren? In the balance of the heart, that's what the Bible says, the mouth speaks. So whatever is in your heart, that's what will come out. If you hear somebody, you know, uttering a want, you know, that is not very good. You know that that is what is in the heart of that person. So the word of God is telling us, let us purify our hearts. Let us wash our hands. And by so doing, we shall be able to come close to God. Praise the Lord. Repress. You are, you are, you are, you are evil doings with, you know, with the experiencing the purity of God. Amen. God is holy and he wants people who are holy. And in the book of Psalms, chapter number 24, verse 3 and 4, the psalmist is saying, Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? It is only those with clean hands and pure hearts. Praise the Lord. Amen. For you to stand in the holy place of the Lord, you need to have clean hands. You need to have pure hearts. Praise the Lord. So I want you to know, for God to accept you, for you to be closer to him, you need to have clean hands and pure heart. And by so doing, Jehovah God will be able to accept you. And you will be able to be near him. Praise the Lord. You know our God is holy. Our God is holy. For you to be closer to him, you need to be holy also. You need to clean your hands. You need to have pure hearts. If you don't have that, I want to tell you that you shall be very far away from God. And in the book of Isaiah, chapter number one, at verse 16 and 18, God is telling 
cleanliness. Wash and make yourself clean. Wash and make yourself clean. That's what God is telling us. Stop doing wrong. You people, stop doing wrong. Run to do right. If you stop doing wrong and you want to do right, I want to tell you, you shall be close to God. And then God is telling us, take your evil deeds out of my sight. Yes, your evil deeds, take them out of my sight. And then the word of God is telling us they are down. Then I will be able to listen, to listen with you. So, my brother, my sister, if you stop doing wrong, if you run to do right, and then you remove evil deeds from the eyes of the Lord, I want to tell you, you shall be able to reason with God. Praise the Lord. You will be able to reason with Him. You will be able to go near Him and reason with Him. That's what He is telling us. And then you know the promises of God is yes and amen. If He tells you, you just remove your evil deeds away from my sight. And then you come. We listen together. That's what God means. Praise the Lord. He will listen with you. Number four. Another way of coming closer to God is by being sorrowful and have deep grief for your sin. Being sorrowful, having deep grief for your sins. Praise the Lord. Amen. Feel sorry for yourself. Have sorrow because of what you have done. You know there is a tendency of some people thinking that, you know, they are okay, their books are good with God. And especially the born again Christians. But I want to tell you, feel sorry, grieve because of your sins. Mourn and cry and then call upon the name of the Lord. If you do that, my brother, my sister, you will be able to come close to God. And he's ready to restore you. You know when we are far away from God, and we accept to come close to him, our God is a massive God. He will restore you to a right of place. Praise the Lord. Yes, you have been a rebel, but if you come close to him, he will restore you to a right of position. Praise the Lord. And in the book of Jonah, chapter number 3, at verse 6 and 8, the servant of God called Jonah was sent to the city of Nineveh to go and proclaim a message of God there. And uh, when Jonah went there, because the wickedness of this city had reached God, Jonah proclaimed the message and these people repented. And the Bible says when they received the message, they, 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 they put on a sackcloth and they fasted. And when the message reached the king, the Bible says he removed his royal robes and put on a sackcloth, sat on the dust, and then he proclaimed fasting in that city. And he said, let there no, be no man. Let there be no beast. Let there be no frog. Let there be no, no, no hand that shall eat anything so that God can listen unto us. This is a king. And because the wickedness of this city had reached God, he had realized, and rest now we repent. And rest. We hear the word of God and rest. We see what we have done before God. We cannot be able to be near him. He will destroy us. And that's why he led his people to fast so that God can listen unto them. So my brother, my sister, I want to tell you, you need to be sorrowful because of what you have done. Yes, you have been a rebel, but I want to tell you, if you grieve, if you mourn, 
if you shed your laughter to morning, you'll be able to come close to God. Hallelujah. Uh, another way of coming close to God is by being humble. Praise the Lord. You need to be humble. You need to be able to humble yourself before God so that Jehovah God can be able to lift you up. You know some people don't want to humble themselves. And especially these people who are in high ranks. Those people who are educated. Those people who have properties. They don't want to humble themselves. Yes! You need to humble yourself so that God can be able to lift you up. Don't lean on your own understanding. Lean unto God. Come closer to God. Humble yourself before him. And in the due time, he will lift you up. Brethren, I want you to know, for us to be close to God, we need to humble ourselves. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter the position you hold. Maybe in your organization, maybe in the church, or where you are. You need to humble yourself for you to come close to God. And for you to be near a God. Humble yourself. Don't be a rebel. Humble yourself. In the book of Romans, chapter number 12, and verse 3, the word of God is telling us, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to be, but think of yourself with a sober judgment. Praise the Lord. With the measure of faith that God has given you. Think of yourself with sober judgment. Don't think yourself so highly. Praise the Lord. There is a tendency of people. You know, taking, you know, considering themselves as so, you know, so high, you know, they are up there. But I want to tell you, you need to humble yourself. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter the position you are holding. You need to humble yourself so that God can be able to lift you up. In the book of Daniel, chapter number 4, verse 30 to 31, as I wind up, there was the, this king, king of Babylon, called Nebuchadnezzar. And this king was so proud. At one day, as he was walking on the roof of his royal palace, he looked at the Babylon and he said, Isn't this the great Babylon I have built with my own power as my loyal residence for my loyal majesty? And the word of God says, the words were still on his lips when, when, when a voice came from heaven and told him, your loyal authority has been taken away from you. Praise the Lord. Because you know this king was proud. And the word of God says that he, he uh, the word of God says that uh, he gives grace to the humble. For you to come close to God, you need to humble yourself. Don't be proud like this king. You know, it is God who sets up kings and it is God who disposes them. The same God who will set you there and he's the same God who will remove you from there. So you need to humble yourself before him. And that's where we fail. Because if I am given, you know, a certain position, I feel myself, you know, because, you know, I am up there. I don't want to humble myself. Even before my reader, for example, I feel, you know, to be somebody somewhere. But I want to tell you today, you need to humble yourself so that God can be able to lift you up. And in the book of 1 Peter, chapter number 5 and verse 6, the word of God says, humble yourself under God.
God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Praise the Lord. So if you humble yourself, that's what the word of God is telling us. In due time, the same God, you humble yourself under him, he will lift you up. Praise the Lord. I desire to be lifted by my God in due time. Praise the Lord. My brother, my sister, I would want to encourage you. Humble yourself before God and he will be able to lift yourself up in due time. Because he's our God. He's the one who formed us. He knows you are A and he knows you are Z. Praise the Lord. He knows everything you own. He's the owner of gold and silver. So there is nothing you can be proud of because all have been given by God to you. So humble yourself, brethren, before God and he will be able to lift you up. My brother, my sister, I would want to encourage you today in the name of the Lord for you to come close to God, for you to be near God, for you to draw near God. Be able to do these things. And as you do that, I want to assure you, Jehovah God will come close to you and he will be able to protect you even during this time of coronavirus and so many things that are happening. Jehovah God will protect you. You will not die, you will live. You will not die of corona. Be close to God. You will not die of hunger. Jehovah God will provide for you. He is Jehovah Jireh. So if you come close to him, there is nothing that you will miss. You will not neglect. He's a merciful God. He's the one who formed you. And he knows about you. So this morning, I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister. You come close to God. Return to him. You are born again Christian. You are away from God. Return to him and come closer to him. You are not born again. You are being called upon to come closer to God. And he is ready to accept you in the name of the Lord. And if we do that, brethren, we are assured in God that we shall get everything in the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the word of God I wanted us to share this morning. And I do pray and believe that God will help you so that that one, can, you can have a revelation of that one and you can be able to come close to God and Jehovah God is ready to receive you. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you. We want to glorify your holy name. We want to magnify you, Jehovah God, because you are good, you are faithful, and there is none like you. My Father and my God, we have shared your word. We do pray, dear God, that you may help each one of us so that that one may have a place in our hearts so that the one can change our life, Jehovah God. We thank you, O King of Kings. We thank you, Lord of Lords. We thank you because of this nation, Jehovah God. We commit it before thy Abraham, O God. Even these times that we are facing problems, we do pray, dear Lord, that you shall be with us. You shall help us, O God, to come out of this menace in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Jehovah God. We glorify your holy name. Be with your people, Jehovah God. Bless them, O my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word, my Father, change your people for the better, for the glory and the honor of your name. We thank you and we honor you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.